Welcome to Season 5 of Public Health on Call, a podcast from the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. I'm Joshua Sharfstein, Vice Dean for Public Health Practice and Community Engagement and a former health commissioner here in Baltimore, Maryland. Our goal with this podcast is to bring scientific evidence and experience to shed light on critical health issues. If you have questions or ideas for us, please send an email to publichealthquestion at jhu.edu. That's publichealthquestion at jhu.edu for future podcast episodes. Hey, listeners, I'm Lindsay Smith-Rogers, producer of Public Health on Call. Today, Josh Sharfstein talks again to Sean Trulove, an assistant scientist from Johns Hopkins involved in the COVID modeling hub, about the latest predictions looking at what might happen with the Omicron wave. Let's listen. Dr. Trulove, thank you so much for coming back to speak with us on Public Health on Call. Now, the last time we talked, I think it was October 1st, and we were talking about the future of the Delta wave, and you were talking about the scenario modeling hub and what was being predicted for the Delta wave. Yeah, and thanks for having me, Dr. Sharpstein. Great to be here again. Now, if I recall, we were hopeful that by now, maybe the Delta wave would be subsiding, we'd be seeing much lower number of cases, but I do remember there was a caveat you had from that model back in October. Yeah, and that, that caveat that's continued to plague us is, you know, what's next? Is is there going to be another variant that emerges? And, and here we are, we now know there there is another variant, the Omicron variant. Yes, uh, a word that was nowhere on our mental landscape, but it's now taken over our lives. So you have gone through the modeling process, um, looking at the future of the Omicron wave. Could you just remind me and and our listeners of what that process is. What do you do to develop these models? Yeah, so what we're doing with this work, this is the uh, COVID-19 scenario modeling hub, is really trying to bring together uh, several teams, several groups of experts who have been looking very deeply into a lot of this um, and get their consensus understanding of what might happen in the future under some specific, uh, specific parameters and and assumptions um, defined by scenarios. And really what we're trying to do is get a sense of what could happen given all of the uncertainty that exists, right? And this was an emergency round uh, to try to understand what could happen with Omicron in the United States. Um, There was, you know, there's, there's been data coming out very quickly out of places like South Africa, the UK, Canada, elsewhere. Um, but you know it, it's coming out very quickly and it's it's inconclusive in a lot of ways. Um, and so uh, what we're trying to do here is really taking in a lot of that information. Can we get a sense of what could happen given what we know so far? Got it. How many of the teams were able to participate in this round? I think we had five teams with uh, national projections. There were two two teams that provided state level projections for two states. Great. And these are all on the website which we will uh, put in our notes for this podcast. So let's cut to the chase. What were the main findings? I know you asked these modelers to look under different scenarios, but what's the big picture for the future? Yeah, the big picture is that, you know, as we're starting to see in a lot of places, the Omicron wave is really starting to increase cases um, and hospitalizations, and it's going to continue to do that across the country. Uh, And this is going to be a very rapid uh, wave of COVID-19 in the U.S. Um, we're going to see it go up very quickly. We're going to see it peak very quickly. Um, and we're probably going to see it come down quite quickly because it's really, uh, with, with the immune escape nature, as well as potentially the increased transmissibility of this virus, um, it is just going to infect a lot of people very quickly, uh, and including people who are previously uh, protected from, from from infection from Delta and from other variants. So it's the fact that people are susceptible, even if they've been vaccinated or been infected before, they're certainly susceptible to getting infected that really just turns this into an explosive growth virus, as well as its potential for transmission. Absolutely, right. And we're dealing with a virus that's you know now as, as infectious as the Delta variant, but it's kind of like we're starting over again because a lot of that immunity that we've built up through vaccination, through prior infection, doesn't matter as much. But the good news is we're not totally starting over because there's some protection against serious illness and death. And is that something 
you all considered in the model? Yeah, absolutely. That's a really key component. Um, and there still remains quite a bit of uncertainty around what that exactly means, how much protection uh, is remaining. Um, but we do think there's quite a bit. And that's really important, right? We're seeing a lot of infections and hopefully that's not going to translate into you know, as many hospitalizations and deaths as it, as it would have previously. Uh, but we do think that we are going to see pretty substantial levels of hospitalizations and potentially even deaths, even in, in populations that were previously well-controlled and highly vaccinated. So one of the major thoughts heading into 2022 is that we'll be managing this pandemic based on the number of severe cases, the number of hospitalizations, the number of deaths, not so much just based on the number of cases. And that, that's a concept, but of course, applying that concept means really understanding what's going on with the healthcare system. So could you tell me a little bit more about these projections about hospitalizations? Maybe, do you think we're going to be seeing more hospitalizations than we've ever seen at any point during the pandemic? How does this compare to say, the peaks we had with Delta in the summer or the peaks a year ago um, when we had so many deaths? Right, yeah. So. I think, you know, in terms of the Delta wave, we do see that uh, it is in the realm of possibility that we will exceed hospitalization um, very plausibly uh, in a lot of states and in all these scenarios. It's not guaranteed, um, but we are starting to see that already in some cases like Maryland. But there's a chance that, you know, it may not hit those levels. Uh, in terms of any level previously seen, you know, we're looking at January uh, 2021, somewhere around there, it's possible we we reach those levels. There's quite a bit of uncertainty because we still just don't know how much protection uh, remains against hospitalization, and and um, there's a you know there's some uncertainty around transmissibility and and immune escape as well. Um, so we're we're not completely certain on where it's going to go, but we do think that it's it's going to be pretty substantial in a lot of places. So. That'll be obviously be something to watch very closely. There's also the question of how hospitalizations will be linked to deaths, because there are some reports that even people who are being hospitalized are not as severely ill as they used to be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and we're seeing also, too, uh, you know, a, a lot of hospitalization among younger individuals, but it's potentially not 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 severe cases necessarily. You know, there's been a lot of reports about detection of uh, infection in the hospital among individuals who are already there as well. Right. So, so far you've told me we're going to get a lot of cases. They're going to come pretty fast and they're going to be more hospitalizations, but we don't know quite how many. So I can't say this is all a revelation. I think <laughs> this is what I praise myself for at this point, you know? Yeah. Um, what about on the other end of the peak? What, what do these models show? Like, you know, we're going to learn about just how bad this surge is and what we need to do to, to blunt it. What does life look like on the other end? Is there any, you know, perspective that the modeling can give? Yeah, so we, you know, we think it's going to come down pretty quickly. Um, our projection period ends middle of March, and we're seeing these projections coming down quite a ways uh, by the time that the projections are over. Um, and really, I, I think that there's a good chance that this is going towards very lower, you know, much lower cases, uh, though we don't really know, you know, there's still quite a bit of um, uncertainty around what waning looks like, how much residual protection against the next variant, if that is potentially a thing that happens, um, and what that means. And, you know, are we going toward this being endemic, this being seasonal, like uh, other coronaviruses, it's, it's still a little too early to tell. And I think we've learned after two years of this that uh, when we guess at these things, we typically are a little off. Well, um, it does provide some insight, but it sounds like we're ending today just where we started, that if there's a brand new variant, all bets of the models are off. Well, I hope that's not the case. I, I think this variant has shown us that, you know, we're building up immunity, to, at least to severe disease, to death. Right. We're getting to a point where every subsequent infection on average is less and less severe. And so by the nature of this thing infecting so many people, it may confer that much more uh, protection against the next thing. And we may just see that the, if there is a new variant, it's just not going to be a, a, a serious thing anymore. 
Well, that is a hopeful statement from somebody <laughs> who has spent a lot of time with a lot of models. So Dr. Trula, thank you so much for, for joining us. And I'm sure we'll, we'll be back um, for some discussion of models in the future. Thank you, Dr. Sharfstein. Public Health On Call is produced by Joshua Sharfstein, Lindsay Smith-Rogers, and Stephanie Desmond. Audio production by Niall Owen McCusker, Matthew Martin, Spencer Greer, and Holly Cardinal, with support from Chip Hickey. Distribution by Nick Moran. Production support from Catherine Ricardo. Social media support from Grace Holes Fernandez. Thank you for listening. Thank you.